Good morning, E-World. It is a beautiful day. We ain't got to stay in the man cave today. We can go out here and do a little bit of work outside. Uh, let's see what's going on. Okay. No, uh, no lawn mowers this morning. So cool, cool, cool. I got a little small project that I'm going to do this morning. And uh, I'm going to show you guys. It's a very easy one. Uh, I'm not even going to show you all the uh, little details involved. I'm just going to explain it. And uh, you'll be able to figure it out. Anyway, what we're doing this morning is we're going to install this headlight switch on my new bike. Uh, right now, uh, I installed this headlight and uh, right now it's mounted on the fender. I'm going to move it because it's definitely not high enough. Uh, there's a little L bracket on, on the back, back there and uh, I can flip it around and mount it right there and turn the bracket the other way and that will lift it up to maybe about here because where it is now it points forward pretty well but I'm not illuminating the ground enough so uh, I need to be able to angle it down a little bit without without the fender catching all the light so uh that's what we're going to do this morning. And um, as you can see, how I was running it temporarily, I had this uh, power wire with this XT60 coming out, and that is uh, on a wire connector uh, to the other side of my charge input on the BMS. Uh, I have this charging port that I put in here that uh, uses an XLR connector. And uh, I plug my charger in there, and this this double as a way for me to plug up my headlight for right now. And if I wanted to fast charge my bike, I have another charger that I could connect here as well. And yes, you can run two chargers in parallel, just like you can use two batteries in parallel. I have two 5 amp chargers. I can run them in parallel and be charging at 10 amps. I even have a third charger. I could, if I wanted to charge at 15 amps, I could do that. But uh, 10 is enough if I'm trying to, uh, you know, charge it up quickly. Uh, one other thing I've done, as you can see, I've installed, well, I put on a few little stickers. Uh, that there crisscross and a little sticker there and uh trying to stay with the red and black thing uh what i'm going to do because i don't like this white it kind of throws everything off i got a red marker and uh i'm just going to color in the white letters with red so uh this will be in red the next time you see it, hopefully, if I can get a good red marker. And this will be in red as well. And uh, I'll probably even do it on my little fender cover. I don't like the white at all on the bike. And, uh, yeah, I, I prefer to have everything red and black. And uh, staying with that red and black thing, those are my favorite colors together, man. Uh, that's why this frame was just so perfect for me. Uh, I also have plans to, I wanna remove all these screws and have them maybe painted in red. I think that would look slick, you know, the little red screw heads and possibly even uh, the little spoke ends in red, red and black. I'm going too far, guys. You let me know. But uh, I'm going to try to keep it uh, without looking too crazy. 
Uh, people ask me what this is for. I mean, it really just was for a little bit of decoration. It moves out of position. Uh, I normally have it there, and uh, it comes up like that. And I could, I could strap little stuff back here, like my hat or whatever. Um, but I'll be able to remove that when my new seat comes. I ordered a new seat exactly like this one, but uh, it's in red and black. Uh, this part here is in red, and then it's got some little diamond configurations back there. Uh, as you can see, I got the rear view cam back there for my, uh, my dash cam. I mean, not my dash cam, my rear view cam. Uh, I know that may look a little cluttered up there, but unfortunately, I'm not worried about that too much, man. I gotta have this rear view cam. Uh, I, I tried to go with these little, uh, uh, mirrors. I mean, they work. I just don't like the mirror thing. I really like the rear view, uh, do I have that plugged up? No, I don't have it plugged up. I really like that, man, because even at nighttime, it has night vision. Uh, even when it's pitch black, you can see back there, and to me, that's just great. And uh, I ride on the road, so I need to be able to uh, see what's behind me. Um, uh, okay, one other thing. I want to, all right, anyway, let's get to the switch. So here's the switch. And this is a real easy wiring job. All you're going to do, if you notice, this switch just has two wires and... That light that I'm using doesn't uh, pull a lot of current. It's actually a pretty cheap light. I paid 15 bucks for that light. Now, there are a lot of high-powered high LED lights that draw a lot of power. Like, my buddy has one. And, I mean, his light is super bright now. Don't get me wrong. It's super, super bright. But it gets so fucking hot that it has heat sense, uh, heat sink on top. This light doesn't get hot at all. Not that hot. You can leave your hand in front of it and it won't burn your hand. There's no way you can put your hand in front of his light. It'll cook your hand. So, my point is, his light and lights like that draw a lot of current. Uh, maybe, maybe like uh, 5 or 10 amps. And uh, when you're drawing that much current, 5 or 10 amps, you can't always just run that through just a plain old cheap switch. Uh, you'll have to use a relay. And uh, I can show you how to do that uh, another time. Uh, you need relays if you want to switch uh, stuff that pulls a lot of current. I'm not sure how many amps this uh, switch is rated for, but I'm sure it's not that much. And like I said, if you got a high power light, you definitely don't want to run it through this switch. You'll burn the switch out. But uh, you definitely could use this to uh, activate a relay. No problem. But since we can run this straight, all we have to do is interrupt one of these wires, either the hot or the ground, it doesn't matter. Uh, most likely, I will do the ground. It makes more sense to interrupt the ground, so that way if, you, if your connection comes loose or anything, it's not a hot wire that can short out anything. So we'll interrupt the ground, and what I mean by that is just cut it in half. When you cut it in half, you're going to attach one side of this switch to one side of your ground wire and you're going to attach the other side this to the other side the other wire that's it that's all you're doing you're just sticking it in in uh series so i don't even need to show that but like i said pretty easy cut the ground wire this to one end this to the other end run your wires wire tied and mount the little switch and that's it uh, one thing I do want to show you guys 
if you haven't used these they are great I'm old school so I was doing everything the hard way as far as uh, soldering with my soldering iron and using uh, heat shrink but they have these little connectors and I'm not sure how long they've had these these probably been out for a long time but I never used them but these are so, well I'm not going to call them solderless what do they call these things solder seal wire connections and what you do is when you you cut your wire like we're going to cut that ground you cut the ground and uh, you slip this on it you twist your wires together and you slide the part where you see the solder and you slide that right over top of where you have your wires twisted then you use a little torch or a cigarette lighter or something and you heat this up just just as if you were doing normal heat shrink and this will shrink down it has these little glue where you see the blue at little glue pieces to uh hold the wires together it gives it a you know makes gives it a little bit more strength and the solder in the middle it melts at a pretty low heat so like i said you can you can melt that with a cigarette lighter or a torch and that will automatically solder your connection and have heat shrink on it. I mean, these are awesome. They come in a couple of different sizes. I, I used up most of the little ones. But uh, yeah, man. If you've never used these things, buy them. They are great. Solder seal wire connectors. And of course, I have uh, heat shrink in all different sizes and you know the usual other stuff wire ties and stuff but yeah that's pretty much it and like i said I, i'm not even gonna waste your time with setting up the camera and everything and, and showing this uh installation or this connection i mean it's, it's nothing to it i just explained it as about as easy as you can explain it anyway one other thing i want to say maybe i can get some help from some of you guys because I've got a lot of help from a lot of my uh, my true blue subscribers as far as uh, they've helped me with name and stuff and this and that you know like my first bike uh, that I modded over there and I love my Zuko Rhino which was Frank over there uh, I named Frank myself but uh, I had some help with uh stuff like uh my crooked finger production name you know who uh gave me that name or helped me with that and i appreciate that because it's definitely a crooked finger production no doubt about it but i named this bike frank ski because i was trying to keep everything in the frank line but this was the the ghetto fired version of frank so I called them Frank Ski, but uh, I don't know. My wife, she don't like that name. So I'm not changing it just because of her. And maybe I won't change it at all. If y'all think Frank Ski is cool, then I'm gonna stick with Frank Ski. If not, I'm looking for another name. And initially I said I was gonna name this, this bomber build Barney. Uh, because you remember I had Frank then I had the other Zugo that I called Fred and uh, that uh, juice bike out there I called it that one Wilma because it was a step through and uh, you know what I said about step throughs I, I you know that's just me I feel like step throughs are girls bikes but in this day and age it's, it's not the same and step throughs are great for older guys like my old ass honestly because in a couple more years I ain't gonna be wanting to throw my leg up over that thing but I still doubt if I'll be sliding it through a step through I only have that because I got a really good deal on that but I'm giving that bike to a friend of mine that uh He's a little older than me for sure, and he could use that step through. Anyway, running my mouth as I always do, and uh, 
Yeah, what do you think? Barney? Barney the Bomber? <laughs> or Frank Ski? And I know that ain't much to talk about, but shit, man. I, like I said, man, I named all my vehicles because uh, I have a relationship with my vehicles. They are my loves. And there's no doubt in my mind, I am loving this thing right here. Make no mistake about it. Uh, as you can see, I did get that uh, kickstand fixed up with that little, uh, what do you call that damn thing? Oh shit. Ah, damn it. That's what happens when I get, when you get old, man. I had brain freeze all the time like a damn idiot. But, uh, that's one of them wheel pegs. It goes on the side that, uh, the little, uh, freestyle guys use foot pegs or whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, that's a foot peg. And uh, like I said in my other video, most of these kickstands that have the adjustable leg that you can slide up and down, I don't know why they make them shits out of plastic. Why don't they make that out of metal and it'll be strong and sturdy? Every time I extend one of them damn things out, and, and most of the time you have to extend it all the way out, if it's plastic, that little plastic shit bends or breaks. So anyway, that ain't breaking. I ain't got to worry about that. I did the same thing in the front back in the day with the other one. I hate because, yeah. Anyway, uh, I still haven't made up my mind on uh, trying to order some, some good brakes for this damn thing. Uh, initially, these brakes were hard horrible because uh, I rushed on getting those and I didn't realize that they were dual piston and I had four piston so I ended up changing the pads to some quality pads and that helped a whole lot and not only that now I'm using the regen and that's another thing I want to talk about. I hear guys in videos, YouTubers, other e-bikers all the time saying they don't use their region because they don't live in a hilly area or they live where it's flat and uh, it ain't worth it. They don't, they don't notice any juice, uh, you know, being uh, acquired by their region. Let me tell you something, man. Regen is not just to charge your battery. That's just one little uh, benefit you get from using Regen. The most important reason why you use Regen is to help with braking. To help slow these damn bikes down. Man, Regen is so goddamn good, man. With this bike, I can just about stop this bike almost using regen. And I don't have to put any pressure on this on this handbrake. I just barely have to squeeze it to uh, make the switch engage. You know, uh, the uh, motor interrupt, the brake, uh, the low brake. And that activates the regen as well as cuts power to your motor. And man good regen along with a good set of brakes makes all the difference in the world i can be driving this damn thing at 50 miles an hour and just barely pull on the on the lever and activate the regen and slow this thing down awesomely you can you can set the regen whatever you want to set it at right now i have my uh e-brake i'm saying regen maybe i should call it e-brake like they call it like it's supposed to be called and maybe people will uh start using that so i have my e-brake set at 75 amps which some people might think is a little high but uh that's where i want it. uh my first experience with uh e-brake was uh 
when I drove my buddy's Onyx in New York. And I was amazed at the braking power of that Onyx. And that was mainly due to the region on top of having a good set of brakes. So, uh, you know, you can get away with some single piston brakes by using region. But like I said, I hear people all the time, other YouTubers, and I mean, that's that's just so crazy to me. Saying, I don't even gonna use Regen, I'm not getting no benefits by Regen, or it's slowing me down, yada yada. Man, do you know how much money you'll save on brake pads from using Regen? And, uh, you know, help stop that damn thing? Regen may save your life. So all this talk about, uh, I'm not using Regen because I don't live in a hilly environment. That is crazy talk, man. Regen is to help slow that damn bike down. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of my morning rant. That's not really a rant. But, uh, yeah, man, I hear that shit all the time. It don't make no damn sense. Guys, later. Mm, got that early morning rough look. Need to shave and all that. But it is what it is. This is a Crooked Finger Productions. Deuces. And we out.